Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Cheryl coming through with the new intro and the new hairdo so let me know what you think down below. If you're new, welcome to the C-Squad. Over here we do beauty, fashion, lifestyle and vlogs so if you like the sound of that then hit the subscribe button below, follow me on Instagram and join the fam. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for joining me again on C-Squad Sunday. So as many of you know, I go to the University of Sussex in the UK but in my first and half of my second year, I went to the University of the Vitfotostrand and all of you guys have been really loving my Vits Freshers Advice video and I've been getting questions on how to get into Vits, what does provisional acceptance mean, so I'm gonna run all of this down and I'm gonna give you all the tea on how to get into the University of the Vitfotostrand and also how I managed to get a partial scholarship. So let's get right into it. So a little bit of background, uh, Vits is the only university I actually applied to in South Africa. I was really kind of not interested in going to UCT uh, or Rhodes or any other university or Tux or anything. Um, I was like, if I'm going to study in South Africa, I'll probably just study at Vits. I did apply to the UK, so Vits was a backup 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 plan. But uh, yeah, it's the only university I applied to and I managed to get in. So I think I can help you guys if you really want to get in. So the first thing is to go to the Vits website, go to your course and check the entry requirements, okay? So I'm just gonna give you an example. So obviously um, I studied computer science, well, I'm still studying computer science, but um, at Vits, I was studying computer science. So currently the entry requirements for computer science are an APS of 40 or above, um, a level five in English home language or first additional language, and a level six in mathematics. Now, when I applied to Vits, you actually had to have a minimum APS of 42. So they've actually lowered the requirements. So yeah, just keep in mind that when you're looking at these requirements, don't like look at the fact that in 2020 they're accepting students with a 40 or above because in 2021 it might be 42 could be 38 we don't know they kind of like change it up so i would always say look at the minimum requirements but aim higher even if you think you need a level five for english aim for level six if you need a level six for maths aim for level seven and so yeah but for those of you who don't know if you're in matric if you're in grade 11 uh, i'm gonna go back and explain to you what an APS is. An APS is your admissions point score. Now each university in South Africa kind of calculates theirs differently. So you do need to go and check the website for each university and make sure you're calculating it correctly. So I'm gonna look at my screen here so I can run you through how um, VITS does their APS. So uh, basically, if you get between 90 and 100, you get 8 points. Between 80 and 89, you get 7 points. Between 70 and 79, you get 6 points. Yeah, 6 points. Um, and so, yeah, so it just kind of goes down like that for each subject. So the ways in which Vitz's APS are different to other universities is that they don't um, differentiate between designated and non-designated subjects. So certain subjects like computer applications technology would be a non-designated subject, but a lot of universities are now recognizing it as a full subject. So yeah, it's things like that, but they really, they don't distinguish between what kind of subjects you're doing. It is your top seven subjects. They also are different in the sense that they include LO. A lot of universities don't include life orientation as part of the APS, but VITS does, but they count it as half the points of a regular subject. So for example, um, if you get between 90 and 100 for LO, that's four points. Uh, if you get between 80 and 89, that's three points, so on and so forth. From 60 downwards, um, you don't get any points for LO. So your LO marks need to actually be really good. Another way is that they actually give you additional points for maths and English. So if you get between 90 and 100 for maths or English, that would usually be eight points, but they add a further two points for math and english so yeah just be sure to check out their website i will link this down below for you guys so that you guys can check it out and see how to calculate your APS. So yeah, your APS is very important because you obviously need it when you're calculating your minimum entry requirements. And I also forgot to mention that it is your best seven subjects. So for a lot of us, I don't believe AP maths counts 
or AP English or any AP classes won't count so they won't take that into account and they'll look at your other seven subjects um, and obviously if you're just taking seven subjects they're just looking at your seven subjects now the key is to do well in grade 11 uh, your grade 11 results are very important because you apply in the trick like before you really have any of your other marks and obviously you haven't written finals so the only marks that you have to show the university are your grade 11 marks so you really 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 need to study hard in grade 11 you really need to take it seriously um it is quite arguably like one of the most important years especially since a lot of your syllabus in grade 11 is what you learn is what you actually tested on in matric so uh, you really need to do well in grade 11 so if you do really well in grade 11 and you meet the requirements for your APS and your English and maths and maybe even science depending on what degree you're applying for um, you can then get provisional acceptance now I've been asked a lot about what provisional acceptance is what does it mean can they take away your spot da 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 from my understanding of provisional acceptance, I believe that you have to meet the same requirements of your application in order to get into that degree. So for example, if you need an APS of 40 or above um, for computer science, you need to get that APS in grade 11 and you need to get it in grade 12. It could also be that you just have to pass, but I don't really think that's how it works. I'm not 100% sure, but the, the main thing here is that you really need to aim high in matric. Don't relax. Like provisional acceptance does not mean that you can sit and you can relax and that nothing matters anymore because you're like in, because you're not really in. Like they can always yeah you're not really in so um just be serious about things and don't take things lightly and don't relax or anything okay so as i've mentioned before you need to apply in matric so in matric apply as early as possible i know this video is going up um in june so it's a little bit late it's not very late but you know it's a little bit later than I would have applied, but of course, with the whole situation that's happening in the world, um, I'm sure a lot of people have been, have delayed maybe their application processes, which is completely understandable. But ideally, if you're in grade 11 and you're watching this, you should apply early, like first term of matric, like maybe before like April, like I would apply like March-ish. So yeah. And as far as deadline goes, I am going to look down at my notes here because I wrote a whole bunch of notes for you guys. So your deadlines are the 30th of June if you are applying to the back to the Faculty of Health Sciences. Uh, if you're doing a Bachelor of Architecture, Audiology, Speech Language Pathology, or a BA in Film and TV. Um, and then it is the 30th of September for all other programs. So you're definitely not too late to apply. It is just recommended that you be one of like the first people to get in because also you'll be one of the first people to get your answers back. I think I got my answer back like in April. I don't know, I can check, but I am pretty sure it was pretty early. Okay, so I'm not a liar. I actually got my acceptance, um, it, well, my provisional acceptance in April, it was the 14th of April when they emailed that to me. So obviously that really helps you to know for the rest of your matric year where you stand and where you need to be and stuff. So um, yeah, definitely apply early so that you can hear back early. In terms of the application process, I think it is one of the simplest application processes. Um, anyone who knows, I have done a video on how to transfer universities and applying via UCAS to the UK or even I've seen other people apply to America. Um, it's a lot more extensive and it's a lot more difficult. Um, then again, I did apply like three years ago, so they possibly could have changed the application process but if they haven't it's essentially you just putting in your information um i think you need a, a copy of your id you need a copy of your marks i believe you put in your marks for your different subjects on there um there's no personal statement or anything so that makes your life so much easier okay thanks dogs <laughs> um it makes your life so much easier because they essentially really don't care about whether you are a star athlete i mean unless you're applying for like a sports scholarship or something they don't really care if you're a star athlete or whether you are the best drama person in school or whatever they really just care about your marks and that's why i would say you need to have priorities like i didn't do any sports or any extramurals probably from like grade 10 because i was just 
focused on school. And then obviously you put in your choices for your degree and you are allowed up to three choices. I literally just knew that I wanted to study computer science. So literally my first choice that I put was computer science. And then um, the second one, I think I put like a BCom. A lot of us, if we didn't know, like obviously you know what you want to study, whether it's physiotherapy or whatever it is. And we would just put like our first choice and then we'll just put like a BCom as the second one. Probably not the wisest idea, but like they also recommend that you apply in different faculties because if you're gonna apply for like I don't know what's in like the same field if you're gonna apply for business and you're gonna apply for accounting um if you get denied for accounting it's very possible that you're gonna get denied for business just because they're like in the same faculty and so they look for similar things so that's why i decided to apply for like a commerce and a science subject so as i said before in your aps they do not count your ap classes like ap maths or ap english but these can be very helpful for example in computer science um we do like a lot of math subjects and pretty much like our first year of maths is what we did in AP Maths. So a lot of people who do computer science or do like Axi or any of those things, they actually did AP in school. And the thing is, if they're looking at an applicant um, and maybe you and let's say Cheryl and Betty have the same APS, have the same um, requirements or whatever, like they literally hear the neck and neck. Um, and then Betty didn't do maths it didn't do ap maths and then cheryl did ap maths and you're pretty much sitting there and you're like okay we only have one spot available chances are it's more likely that it's going to go to me because i did do ap maths so i mean i would recommend you do an ap class but you really don't have to um i highly doubt that there are a lot of scenarios where it's like a cheryl versus betty thing um but just in case i was always told that if even though even though AP maths doesn't count towards your APS that it's still really helpful when you're applying to universities. Now the next thing is you need to do well in your MBTs. Now I cannot give you advice on the MBTs. Part of the reason why I didn't apply to any other universities was because I just didn't feel like writing the MBTs. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I just didn't. I didn't want to. It was a whole other thing that I'd have to prep for it was a whole other like now I have to go and I have to set up a day when I have to go and write this thing it was just like I was just like no and at bits I don't know if this is still the way that they do things but when I applied you didn't need to do your MBTs to get into computer science I emailed them to double check so be sure depending on your degree either check on the website or email them to confirm so yeah, I didn't have to do MBTs and so that really just was great because uh, I didn't have to do an extra thing um, but do well in them. I've seen stories on YouTube of people who didn't do well in MBTs and either had to do like a foundation year, maybe didn't get into the university that they wanted to get into. So uh, definitely prep for your MBTs, take them seriously and do well in them. Now, if you've done all of that, you've got your provisional acceptance, you did well in your NBTs, you applied early, like you're doing the things, you're meeting the requirements, you know what I mean? The last thing you need to do is literally just do well in matric. As I said before, don't take this as a time to just be like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pass or whatever, um, because it's also going to affect your scholarships and stuff if you're looking to get a scholarship, uh, which we will get into just now. So yeah, definitely, take it seriously, do well in matric, meet the same requirements that you met in grade 11 for matric, and you will definitely get in to the University of the Bipartistan. I can totally do a video on how to do well in matric and how I studied for matric, and if you guys need any tips on matric, um, please just leave a comment down below and I'll definitely be sure to do that video for you guys. So now let's go into how I got my scholarship. Okay, so the scholarship that I got was a university entrance scholarship, which is basically a merit-based scholarship. Um, so it's based on your APS, excluding life orientation. Mind that, remember that it excludes life orientation. You can't it with six subjects because it's excluding uh, life orientation. So basically, if you get an APS, excluding life orientation, greater than 51, you get 42,000. There's no application needed for these scholarships. They literally just give them based on merit and based on whether you deserve it. Uh, between 48 and 50 APS, you get 30,000. Between 45 and 47, 15,000. Between 43 and 44, 10,000. And yeah, bear in mind that this is not a scholarship that you personally get, like you do not receive 
I, I got 15,000 because my APS was 47. Um, so it's not like I got 15,000 Rand. Like uh, they basically deducted from your tuition. So you just don't have to pay that 15,000, but it's not like it's given to you so that you can pay off accommodation or anything. It is specifically for your tuition fees. So keep that in mind. Um, there are a lot of other scholarships. There's like the Vice Chancellor Scholarship, there are a bunch of other ones. Uh, you can check their website under fees and funding to find all of that out. I can't really help you with that one because I didn't get any other scholarships. Um, and then obviously there's NSFAS funding. And again, I can't help you because I didn't go that route, but you can definitely check on the VITS website and um, on their website about yeah how to get that funding so yeah that pretty much wraps up the video good luck to any of you in matric i know it is a struggle i actually don't know how much of a struggle it is because um i'm not really writing matric in under these conditions but yeah if you guys need any help you know leave a comment down below and i'll be sure to help so be sure to like comment and subscribe to join the c squad and hit that notification bell to be notified when i upload new videos i post every sunday at 5 p.m gmt i'll see you guys in my next video Bye!